The final words of Jesus, as recorded in the Gospel of Matthew, are known as the Great Commission. The Great Commission includes the instruction for his disciples to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Keep in mind, if the disciples were charged with teaching every follower of Christ to obey all the same commands Jesus gave them, then this also includes the command to make more disciples. This is no small thing, because it means the business of all believers is discipleship. So what does discipleship look like? Well, if the old cliché, form follows function, has any merit, then we can answer the question by deciding whether the goal of discipleship is merely to pass on spiritual information, or whether it is to instruct others in hands-on application. Let's examine this further by looking at two different teachers and their very different teaching methods. This is Marge and this is Tom. Marge teaches history, which means she mostly deals in information. The goal is for her students to know what she knows, to transfer Marge's knowledge about people, places, and events from her mind to her students. However, Tom teaches guitar, which requires him to teach not only information, but application. The goal isn't simply for his students to know what he knows about music, but to do what he does, to actually play music. If Tom only transfers a mere knowledge of music to his students, he might end up teaching them music appreciation, but he won't produce any actual musicians. Because Marge only deals in information, she spends most of her teaching time delivering lectures. As long as she can create memorable presentations, students will learn something about history. Furthermore, since the same lectures can be delivered in a small classroom or a large auditorium, she doesn't need to limit the number of students in her audience. In fact, it might make more sense to get as many people as possible to attend every lecture. That way, she can teach far more people at the same time. Maximizing her time this way is what is known as a good return on investment. But because Tom must concern himself with information and application, he can't afford to merely lecture his students about music. A good guitar teacher and his students must actually practice together. Only through observation can Tom find opportunities to correct a student when she doesn't realize she's doing something wrong or commend her when she doesn't realize she's doing something right. Like Marge's history students, Tom's music students certainly require good information, but they also require undivided attention. Sadly, this means Tom has a limitation that Marge doesn't. He must keep his number of students somewhat small or else he won't be able to give them the individual attention they deserve. So whereas Marge might increase her effectiveness by filling up an auditorium, Tom will actually decrease his effectiveness by taking on too many students. This is not a good return on investment. It's actually the law of diminishing returns. Of course, the compromise most of today's churches make is in trying to be both big and small, lecturing like Marge through Sunday morning sermons, and giving personal attention like Tom through small groups, Sunday school, Bible studies, and other church programs. If you'd like to see why such programs are a poor substitute for genuine discipleship, click the link on screen or in the description. At the end of the blog post, you'll find information on how to make your own animations, like the one you just saw.